Here's 50 tips for TDS you need to know to become a pretty good player, I think. From beginner tips to advanced, it's all here, so yeah, subscribe and if we hit 50k subscribers, I'll finally make a content creator tier list and yeah, let's get right into it. First, how to use farms. Often I see even high level players using farms wrong, aka you and Portex, oh my god. With farms, the best upgrades are level 2 and level 3, while the worst one is level 4. So you generally want to get 8 level 3 farms up and then max them one by one. If you have DJ and Ranger equipped, you can actually place a level 2 Ranger next to DJ booth and it'll give DJ some extra range at the start of round so you can get a discount on some previously out of range towers while the buff lasts. When going into the tower menu to buy towers, do not buy any of these towers highlighted here if you're starting out. These are all relatively mid as of recording or are just really annoying to use. Generally, spawner towers are really fun to use, but if you want to maximize their value, use them on curvy maps like Polluted Wastelands as they can easily stack up and deal tons of damage. When you're in a game and realize, oh, nobody has Commander or DJ, you can actually just leave a multiplayer game, go back into the lobby, equip the different towers you want to equip or even skins and just rejoin back. So yeah, that's cool. Speaking of commander, most people are used to the old ability, but having fully maxed commanders actually matter now as the cold to arms ability gets stronger as you upgrade it from 15% on level 2 to 30% on level 4, which means you have to get 3 max commanders instead of just the usual 1 this time. Remember to do your quests as these tend to not really be that hard and can give gems, coins and even rarely deluxe crates which can save you robux over time. I myself kinda forgot this but playing on weekends actually gives you double xp. This is great for progressing if you don't already have all the level towers unlocked yet. Every time you level up, it actually increases your base's HP by 1. Now in case you're wondering how base HP works when you're not playing solo, it's actually based on the person that joins last. Theoretically, you could get to level 10,000 and tank the first 15 waves of most modes, which is pretty crazy. Do not buy skin crates until you at least have all the coin towers. It might seem obvious, but someone needed to hear that. It was me. When you're using Pyromancer, change the targeting to Furvest for maximum damage as it'll hit more enemies this way leading to just more damage overall. Commander is actually unable to increase the damage of Engineer's turrets and can only buff Engineer herself, thus it's generally not recommended to use them as a combo when playing solo. Towers in general tend to get more cost efficient as you upgrade them, so I recommend not spamming low level ones. This is especially true for high placement cost towers like Accelerator. Low cost towers like Shotgunner meanwhile tend to be the most cost efficient on their base or early levels. Shotgunner is insane for beginners as it allows you to basically speedrun modes like Molten Mode so you can get coins really fast. Oh and put targeting to Furvest for maximum damage too. Join the Roblox Paradoxums group for 100 extra starting cash. I know most of you have, but statistically at least one of you haven't so you know who you are. Generally, playing on more difficult maps with multiple lanes is just not worth the extra rewards. Oh, but it's a good way to challenge you. I do not care. Some towers work well with others. An example of this would be Jester and Brawler as they can combo their knockbacks so the enemies just can't like move. Although placing your mercenary base at the end of paths makes sense, remember it has a 20% damage buff, but most people tend to forget about that and end up placing it at the back of paths instead. When you use ranger early to mid game, it can sometimes overkill enemies, so set it to strongest if your defense is solid. Equip green paint bowler. I'm so funny guy, I'm so f <laughs> So you probably already know to place towers close to the front for faster runs, right? However, in cases where you can't, like Inferno, you generally want to place crowd controllers more at the front with the single target towers behind them. Fire and ice towers can't mix, so using both is generally something you want to avoid. For piercing towers like Archer and Frostblaster, place them at the end of straight lines and put their targeting on last for max damage. As you can see, compared to normal, this allows them to hit more than double the enemies on average. I recommend playing duo, trio or quad, especially if you don't have good towers to help you carry instead of suffering alone with like snipers and stuff. If you're starting out, your matchmaking teammates will likely be near the same level as you as they intended, but if you keep getting bad teammates this way, just try getting better teammates at elevators. Generally, for most loadouts, you want to have two DPS towers, one early game tower, one economy tower, and one support tower. Of course, this is just a general recommendation. If you use all spawner towers, that's, that's also a good idea. When using mercenary base, set it to two riot guards and one medic. This combo is elite. 
If you're starting out, power-ups are amazing, as you can compensate for your bad towers by making use of power-up crates you get from Triumphant Games. Just don't directly buy them. When playing PvP, remember to utilize sending zombies and not only defending. A good defense is a good offense. A good. Uh, you you know what I'm. You know what I mean. Some skins are low-key pay to win, as it's easy to see what level they're on, making it easier to know. Okay, I should upgrade that. I have none in mind, but like, there's there there are some good ones. Trust me. You can use the call to arms ability of a commander and sell it right after, and the ability will still last the 10 seconds. If you're just starting out, I recommend going for Soldier and then Militant as fast as possible as these are great jack of all trades towers. Saving up for Shotgunner or Ace Pilot are also good options though. Almost always equip either Commander or DJ as these are too good to give up and are, are generally required for the hardest modes. If you're new, grind Molten Mode as this has a good balance of not being hard while still giving decent coins. Make use of keybinds to sell, upgrade and use abilities of towers as these can save you a lot of time and make it a lot less tedious. TDS. <coughs> Hardcore towers are grindy so decide your first one wisely, generally Accelerator is a good first pick. More of a fun fact, but the color bar of your tower is determined based on the rarity of your skin in case you always wondered why that bar just has a random color. Some zombies have defense that can only be reduced by towers like Pyromancer that melt away defense. If you disconnect, please use the reconnect feature. Nobody uses this somehow. If you get number one on the leaderboard, you get a special champion name tag, so if you wanna flex that, prepare to play TDS for 24 hours straight. Wait, I'm gonna do that. If you want good XP, play Badlands and Polluted Wastelands, as these give a ton more XP than the other modes, so you can get towers like Pursuit and Mercenary Base super fast. Grind for Accelerator or Brawler as soon as you get to level 50, as these towers are very much worth the grind. Engineer and Golden Crates both take a lot of grinding, but overall, getting Engineer first is recommended. It's your choice though. When using farms, remember to sell them on the last waves. On the easier modes, you can just be lazy as they're easy, but on Hardcore, it can make a difference. If you have DJ, place farms close to where you plan to place DJ, so that you get that extra discount later on. Generally, I recommend only buying VIP if you want the EXP bonus and being able to auto-skip waves, as the premium crates aren't that hard to get in the first place. Every tower that has an ability is microable. By this I mean you can use the ability and then sell the tower right after and the ability will still be in effect. This can be really useful for towers like Medic where you can just use the ability and sell it right after to replace it. Make use of the TDS Discord for updated info on the game. If you're level 10 or higher you can use the party queue to find really good teammates. I also have my own Discord if you want to hang out there. When using Ace Pilot, use the normal circular path for maps that have curves in them, whereas for maps with more straight paths, the 8 formation would be more optimal. Place towers packed together like this to just optimize the spacing of towers. And yeah, that's it for the tips. Maybe check this video out, and otherwise, see you on the next one.